And now we move to the start, start of like the Silver this. Goblets Attention. with the Dutch crew Go. of Roll Brass Get and Mitchell Steenman and the German crew of Kluge and Ernstin. And again, a very similar start there from that Dutch pair Ooh. as we saw in the four and a big crab there by the Germans. Well, this is going to be difficult to save and get back into a rhythm quickly. They were looking so clean and tidy, actually, as they went off for the first few strokes. It was just very unfortunate to just catch the water and, and spin the boat to the left. It is incredibly tricky conditions out there. It's, it's a little deceptive from our view, but it is very choppy and very gusty. And, and as you said before, quite rolly with all of the pleasure craft that are out on the, on the water as well. It's such a challenging event, and particularly in the pair. So this Dutch crew is the crew that came fourth at the World Championships last year and have qualified for the Rio Olympics. Uh, so we can expect some good stuff from this uh, Dutch voice. Unfortunately, the German, had that little, German crew had that little trip up there. The Germans on the near side here with a green bow and the, the German flag on their blade on the oars. Yeah, the crew in the yellow boat at the top right hand side of your screen. That is the Dutch crew of Steenman and Brass, Roll Brass, the big man from the Netherlands. He rode the single skull back at the World Championships in 2014. Then he and Steeman combined to row this pair at the World Championships last year, as you say, placing fourth. He's a big scary guy, isn't he? You wouldn't mess with him. He's, uh, he's also the Dutch, uh, Dutch record holder. There, and we have a, the German crew that stopped, so I'm not entirely sure what's what's happened here. Certainly it wasn't stopped by the umpires, but there seems to be some kind of a problem after the crab that he caught, perhaps he's, he's done some damage to his rigger. He's reaching for his gate and it, it looks like there's something happened to the rigging there that's stopping him from rowing. Yeah. Oh, this is a shame. And so the German crew will have to continue. It seems it doesn't seem to be a breakage. Yeah, something's been offset there, so I think they're probably going to paddle this over now, aren't they? This is a... Yeah, what a shame, this uh, young German pairing. They they competed at the World Championships last year, but they were in the C-final. And they've been pretty consistently in B-final, so fourth in the B-final at the most recent World Cup in Poznan. So it would have been, I think, a, a big ask for them to have taken on that Dutch combination it of would... Steeman and Brass. It would have been, and they had a great race uh, yesterday night against the other German pair, uh, and they were looking very strong. And it was a sort of this was a nice test for them against a, a you know a stronger opponent, really. And we're just going to have a little replay of the start where we saw that the German combination caught a crab and perhaps did some damage to their boat at that point. So looking clean at the beginning. Yeah, nice tidy start, and then oh, just there you can see his blade isn't quite square when it goes in and it slices through the water and almost pulls him out. They were, they were very lucky to stay in the boat then, I think. They were, weren't they? They could have had to swim it all the way to the finish, but no, they managed to stay in, but obviously it's done some damage to the uh, to the, to the rig and the pin there. Yeah. yeah, I'm not quite sure where the damage is, if it's on the blade or if it's on the rigger. It's a bit oh, hard yeah. to tell from here. There was a comment from the, uh, from the umpire boat the, of him being too strong. Uh, so, yeah, it's obviously done something, and that's why they're both paddling it over now. As you were saying, so Ruler Brass is a, a phenomenal athlete, obviously very strong, and he was been, been in the single before, but now in the pair, getting ready for Rio. So now it's just a sort of a, a leisurely Saturday row over now today, get ready for the final against the, uh, the French pair. Yeah, which is actually not a bad way to be going into tomorrow because we know that the French pair had a very tough race against the British combination, uh, only just getting up for that win. And I would think that they'd be a little nervous seeing now that Brass and Steenman, who are, who are probably the favourites going into tomorrow's final, are now getting basically a row over of the course. Yeah. But here they do a little burst. They've decided that they need to probably do a little bit of work ahead of tomorrow's final, I would think. so. Very much so. You want to get something useful in the legs, don't you? Get a bit of stimulus, feel the taste the pain, ready for tomorrow. Just giving us a nice little demo of how, how well they can row and give it a good uh, good blast down the course. Yeah, so just a little building piece there, so... 
So obviously last, last year's winner of this event was uh, James Bode and Matthew Language, the British, the uh, senior GB British pair that uh, obviously Matt Language is uh, off, in, off in on his training camp getting ready for Rio. And, uh, and James Fode sadly retired from his uh, with a with a back injury. So, uh, uh, yeah. but those guys aren't in this competition this year. And we know that Steenman in this crew. He last raced at Henley in 2014 when his regular pairs partner Roger Blink withdrew through injury on the eve of racing. And we've actually seen Roger here racing uh, in a four. He's stroking one of the Dutch Club fours which I believe also made it through to tomorrow's finals. So big Dutch presence here, and we'll see them featuring in many of the finals. That's right. We've got some great Dutch boats to watch today, and obviously they've just got back from their training camp in Austria where they've been putting in some good speed work, and as we can clearly see, been work brushing up their technique. Uh, they missed the third World Cup, chose to race here instead, and uh, here to soak up the atmosphere, which I think is what they're definitely doing now as they're sort of taking the... the uh, the sort of the cheers from the crowd and soaking up the atmosphere. We're going to go back down and have another little look at the start and show you what happened with this German boat. You can see on the catch, just there. They did very well to stay in the boat after that grab, I think. But I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what what they've done to the boat. It's quite hard to see the rigger, but there's obviously something wrong with with the gate or the rigger of the stroke man's seat. Yeah, that sort of equipment there, that carbon fibre wing rigger, they're usually pretty sturdy, those. But I guess if you do do some damage to it, that you know, it's obviously tweaks it in a way that makes it feel very uncomfortable to row. And you know, you can see that it's looking quite wobbly and quite twitchy there. So it's probably. You know, it might be like riding a bike with a buckled wheel or something. So um, we know that there aren't really specific rules around this sort of thing and there is, you know, the option for a re-row, but it would seem that with the conversation we saw between the umpire and, uh, and the German combination before that that probably wasn't going to be the case, but we'll certainly keep you posted if anything changes. But for now, I assume that the Dutch crew, if they cross the line, will be progressing to tomorrow's final unless we hear otherwise. I think, I think we're all in limbo a little bit as to what happens next. I mean, it'd be interesting to, to be inside of the minds of the guys and the pairs here, whether they're thinking, oh, are we going to go in and reset this and then have another race this evening? Or are we paddling in and going home? You know? or, or going through to the next round is the other case, might, might maybe. A difficult one to handle and put cater for, really, isn't it? I mean, we just have to wait and wait till we get to the finish line and see if there's a decision that's made. I mean, certainly on the form, we would completely expect the Dutch pairing of Brass and Steeman to win this race. They are a much stronger pair, they're consistently a, top four in the world. They're a classy crew. They're meddling at the World Cups, so yes, that would be that would be the right right uh, call to make. I think they're so. Yeah, their silver medals at World Cup 1 and World Cup 2 earlier this year would indicate that they are a strong medal chance come the Rio Games. And we can see them putting in another little spurt for the crowd. Cheer from the crowd there. A cheeky crowd pleaser. So these guys are normally based on the Boss Band in Amsterdam, do most of their training there. It's a great regatta course. And then obviously if they like to do their mileage, they go off to a small town just outside of Amsterdam and they hop onto an 8k stretch of river in a town called Almira, I think, and uh, that's where they get their mileage training done. Which is what they're doing here, it's a bit of, bit of steady state mileage paddling, or technical paddling. That's right. Through that wash though, that looks quite choppy. It's interesting looking at Steenman there, the stroke man, uh, he takes his outside hand almost completely off the handle at the back turn. There's a couple of international rowers oh, that yeah. do the same thing. I think Josh Dunkley-Smith is one that's copped a little bit about that in the past, but lots of different theories as to the grips and the roles that the hands play. It's interesting watching the different techniques. And here come the German crew. We're not sure exactly what the breakage was or what damage their boat sustained, but 
They caught a fairly nasty crab in the early stages of the race, which meant that this was a row through for both combinations. And the umpires just held up the red flag, so we're waiting to see what happens next.